Mary Magdalene interviews Jesus on the subject of humility. Session 1 is an introduction to humility. The interview took place in Bathurst, New South Wales, Australia, on the 14th of June, 2012. Uh, welcome everyone today. I'm going to be interviewing my beautiful soulmate Jesus on the topic of humility. And we're in windy Bathurst at the moment uh, for part one of what will probably be a three-part series on humility. Mm -hmm. um, quite excited to do this interview actually. It's a, it's a really beautiful topic and hopefully it's a topic that we can deepen people's understanding about um, just what is humility and what it means to live in humility. Yeah, I've sort of noticed that um, you know a lot of a lot of the material that is on YouTube about humility doesn't get watched very much, which is interesting in itself, bearing in mind that it's one of the most important qualities that we can personally develop that will assist us in our relationship with God. Yeah, mm. I, and that's something I'd like to talk to you about later on in the interview, mm. just how that happens and why it's so important. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose it is something that we talk about a lot, don't we? And there are there's one or two specific... Um, presentations that you've given about it but beyond that we just met you and I both mentioned being humble or humility quite a lot mm. um, and I actually think it's something that's quite poorly understood in terms of our whole society and often really ridiculed this state of humility isn't it yes it's yeah. viewed as a state of weakness yeah um, and unfortunately often with with people who are spiritually progressing or attempting to spiritually progress Humility is not very high on their <laughs> wish list of of, uh, of qualities to develop, yeah. but it's the most essential quality uh, to develop in our relationship with God. And one of the things that we often comment about in our private life is the need for more humility in order to experience emotion. Yeah. Like the only way to experience emotion, the causal emotion, is to be humble to it, to, to actually have the quality of humility so much that as soon as you feel the emotion, you actually experience it. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. Well, yeah. maybe we can just um, go back a bit and just talk about the actual definition of humility. Mm -hmm. I, I thought initially I would really like to just present some of the world's definitions of humility. Sure. Uh, so they're actually dictionary definitions that I've found today. Yeah. Um, and so perhaps if I could go through a few of them and then ask you what your definition is. Yeah, uh, sure. Or what a true definition in, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's all a bit, I feel very far away from you. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first one, the first few that I looked up said that this that humble is not proud or arrogant, mm -hmm. modest, having a feeling of insignificance, mm. low in rank, status, or quality, mm. showing deference or submission. And being conscious of one's failings mm. and very often in the synonyms it was related to humiliation mm. and I feel like this is something that many people like these kinds of definitions is often what comes up for people mm. when we mention the word hu humility or being humble especially mm. um, in, in general society yeah. yeah if we really look at those definitions the yeah. first couple where it says not being arrogant um, very true, that is, that is a part of humility. But then it goes on to, what was the third one or fourth one in that list where it says... Uh, showing deference showing, or submission, uh, the being one before low, that, low in rank, low status in and quality. Yeah, yeah, and all of those things are not true. Yeah. They are not, they're not a part of being humble and they're not a part of humility actually. Um, so for that reason, um, I've defined humility quite differently yeah. to what the dictionary does. Okay, so I found another one that I think is a little closer to the mark. So maybe we could hear that one and then sure. hear exactly what you feel it is. So this one was having a lack of false pride, unpretending, meek, defining characteristic of an unpretentious and modest person, someone who does not think that he or she is more important than others, and free of illusions of self-deception. Mm. And I would agree with all of those. Right. They're all part of humility. Yep. Yep. So it's interesting how sometimes there's definitions that you can't agree with at all with regard to humility, and then other times there's definitions that you could say, yes, all of those qualities are a part of the quality of humility. Yeah. Um, 
if if we take humility as in terms of my definition of it which has been humility is the passionate desire to feel and experience all of my own emotions whether they are pleasurable or painful mm -hmm. without blaming or attempting to manipulate or control my environment in any way then then we can see that it encompasses so many things in in that definition yeah. and also there is this feeling that is a part of it and that is that we must submit to our own emotions but we don't necessarily need to submit to everyone else's yeah. um, so this whole idea of submission to somebody else mm -hmm. um, is not really a part of humility another part of, uh, of humility that is often thought is is this whole idea of deprecating oneself mm -hmm. and making other people more important than oneself well you know that's very very difficult to do with god's definition of humility because god the way god sees us is that god sees us as the pinnacle of her creation and if we are the pinnacle of her creation then God doesn't want to make us lower than anything else. Mm -hmm. But also God, does, also God also wants us to have a very clear understanding of our true state and not a state that we would love to see ourselves be in, yeah. which is a state of facade. So then humility is, it's not just this desire to really experience all of our emotions, but it's also a desire to see ourselves as God sees us. Exactly. Yeah. To see ourselves as God, our creator, sees us right at this moment. Yeah. And then also to see ourselves as God sees us in terms of the pristine creation that God made and our potentials and possibilities. Yeah. So when we're humble, we don't have an exalted opinion of ourselves, but we don't also have a terrible opinion of ourselves. Yeah. We, we have this, uh, in fact, once we become truly humble, we, it's almost like we don't have an opinion of ourselves at all. <laughs> <laughs> or is it like a judgment? We don't have a judgment of ourselves then? We don't have any judgments of ourselves, but we don't uh, think about ourselves very much at all in the sense of having to uh, think about ourselves in deference to others or in preference to others. And so, you know, either way, we would be out of harmony with humility if we had either of those feelings. So, so humility allows us to be ourselves, emotionally be ourselves in the moment without even having to think about ourselves in that moment. So why is it that we don't have to think about ourselves in that moment? Because we're open to our feelings or we're open to the truth that we are brothers and sisters? And... Well, if we, if we have the feeling inside of ourselves that we, that we are already comfortable completely with ourselves and being ourselves yeah. in, in uh, and surrounding other people, then there is no need to even think about ourselves anymore in, in a relationship with other people. All we do is interact with them based on our feelings and we don't think about those feelings, we just interact. And if, if those feelings are, are uh, refined and have been brought into harmony with love, then all this, every interaction we have with another person is going to be perfectly, perfectly uh, done. It's yeah. going to also be perfectly um, loving and perfectly honest and truthful. And other people will find us very easy to get along with generally as a result. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we're in this state of pre-humility now or, you know, a long way before humility, most of us, where we're filtering every emotion through... Um, how is everyone going to react to this? Mm -hmm. What's my personal judgment of this feeling? Mm -hmm. What kind of person does this make me? Um, what, my does this, what, what does this person that I think I am look like to others? Yeah, you know, that's a that's big a thing one. that modifies how humble we become. Yeah, mm. okay. So a person who's truly humble doesn't live in their facade. They, they live as they truthfully are. Yeah. Um, and they know who they truthfully am as well. Yeah. So yeah. A, per, a person who, who lives in humility knows who they are and they, they, don't, they don't have this feeling of having to maintain a facade of who they are or to present somebody they're not to others. Yeah. They are perfectly comfortable with who they are but they don't have any exalted feelings about who they are either. So we're not elevating ourselves, we're not deprecating ourselves, we're just saying this is who I am right now. This is who I am and, and in the most loving place that we can be, who you are is exactly as God created you to be um, and and that, that place would be once you've released all of your emotional injuries, all of the pride, all of the arrogance, all of the facade, all of those other emotional injuries that all create a lack of humility will all be gone. Yeah. But once, once that place has uh, been obtained, then you can be who you are without even thinking about who you are because 
you know that everything you will do, it will be loving as a result of what you've already refined in your yeah. own soul. And we can't ever reach that point unless we're first willing to just be this injured person that we are. Yeah, let's that, call it the injured mess. The we? injured mess, <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. that often. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and as I've pre- presented to many talks here, how often we go through this state where we're firstly in the facade, yeah. and that's a very proud, proud and arrogant place, and very, very resistive to truth, Very uh, has a very deep lack of emotional openness, um, you know, and, and often is quite angry and fear-based. And then you've got the injured self, which is what we need to progress into. And the injured self is the person who still has all of these emotional injuries that come from our childhood that we are yet to release so that we can become more loving. But we at least know those injuries. We at least allow ourselves to feel them without judgment. We at least allow ourselves to be that person. And that's the beginning of humility. And then as we work our way through, we learn more and more about humility. And then we get to to be our real self. And our real self usually is accomplished by the time we're at one with God. Now we're recognising our real personal self. There's still further development that we can have as a personality, but we now have the foundation, if you like, of our real self, Mm. obvious to ourselves and also to everyone around us at that point. And so what, what I see a lot of people doing is they live in their facade, hoping and try to make themselves humble in the facade. Yeah. But because it's not yet uh, um, being able to examine the injured self, it's nowhere near humility yet. Once a person starts getting into their injured self and, and being their injured self, now they have a great deal more humility than they had before. Mm-hmm. And then uh, as they release the injured self as they release the emotions that cause their injuries, now they now become their real self who, who is totally capable of being completely humble while at the same time being the pinnacle of God's creation. Yeah, mm-hmm. wow. Mm-hmm. It, it really strikes me the power that I suppose for me, um, I feel like I've been stuck in facade for a long time and um, the thought of you know acknowledging and experiencing this injured self has felt so powerless Mm. and yet now when I touch into that place I feel the power of it Mm. because immediately like there's a there's just a a groundedness I suppose and that more truth is just flowing as a result Mm. Uh, and it was interesting when I looked up these definitions the the root of the word humility uh, actually comes from humus uh, some Greek roots, but around humus, which is of the earth or mm, of the ground. Of the ground. Mm. And I thought, wow, yeah, I feel that in mm. like that. The root really has a lot of meaning here. Yeah, and there's sort of an irony in it, in a in a way as well, isn't it? In the, in the meaning of the word, because because the reality is our body is made of the ground. Yeah, uh, we are. We contain all of the elements that are in the ground, and as a result, we we need to understand where we came from in a way (laughs) the fact that we were created and and we didn't create ourselves we didn't make ourselves and uh, once we understand that then we can always be humble in our relationship with God Mm. we always uh, defer to God's authority we always submit to God's authority under in that place because because we understand where we came from yeah and I think that's probably the the one of the questions that I wanted to ask you about because I, I think um, often I see people around us or even within myself we begin to feel like humility um, is about feeling our emotions and therefore humility kind of equals an ability to cry and and what I see you reflecting is something really different it's kind of a, a quality I see that affects the way you live every day mm-hmm. and it's not just about a willingness to feel your emotions but there's a real respect for God and God's truth within that yeah. and um, I guess I was I, one of the things I wanted to ask you I want to spend the, the rest of this interview and possibly the next asking about all the aspects of humility mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but just if you could give us a, an overall picture of what it looks like to be humble all of the time is that Sure. Um, in terms of, well, the first thing that I mentioned uh, so far, have mentioned, is this ability to be yourself at, at all times without being conscious of yourself very much at all. Mm. And so, in other words, when we're humble, we have no real self consciousness um, in the sense of we're not worried about ourselves or worried about how we appear to others. 
we're not worried about how things look to others or what we're doing and how it looks to others. So is that really an element of pride? When when I'm still conscious of how's this person viewing me, that's just an indication I've still got pride within me. Yeah, well, it's an indication that, that, that there is still emotions within where we're being... Um, self-judgmental and the only reason why we would be self-judgmental is because we want to portray ourselves to be something that we're not Mm -hmm. and that is a is one of the things that you know an arrogant or a a person who's proud does and the reality is that once we are humble we portray ourselves as we truly are and in fact, it's not even a portrayal. It's a, in, the, in the sense that it's not something we attempt to do. Mm. It's just something that naturally happens uh, we, we don't, without thinking about it. So that, that's one of the main aspects of humility. Secondly, um, when we're humble, we feel everything as we feel it. So other people, our, our emotions are written on our face, in other words. We, we don't try to mask our face with a whole series of emotions um, of emotions that are not present within our soul or vice versa mask our face with a smile when inside of our soul we we feel you know sad or shame ashamed or angry or bitter or whatever other emotion we feel we allow the complete reflection of our true emotional condition to come out it doesn't mean that we be obnoxious to everyone because in fact if we're truly loving we wouldn't be obnoxious to everyone and if we're truly humble we wouldn't try to impose our unloving behavior upon another person but we would always uh, be focused on being as we truly are in every situation uh, in the sense that we wouldn't we wouldn't even worry about what other people would think about us if we were crying in front of them we wouldn't worry if we had a funny laugh we wouldn't worry if we felt ashamed or any other emotion that we might feel all of the emotions we might feel we allow to be present and any of the emotions that we might feel that might be potentially damaging to another person if we are humble we would actually remove ourselves from their company and allow ourselves still to feel those emotions we wouldn't we wouldn't put project those emotions onto another person and cause another person to feel bad just because of an emotion we have that we're displaying if we're truly humble we're very sensitive to everyone around us Mm -hmm. in the sense of sensitive to their feelings but we don't always respond to their feelings if their feelings are out of harmony with love Mm -hmm. so in other words we know when a person's angry with us but we don't respond to an angry person out of harmony with love Mm -hmm. uh, if we're truly humble if we're not humble when a person's angry with us we get angry in return or if we're not humble uh, when a person's angry with us, we might be fear. We might feel fear and try to placate them if we're not humble. If we're humble, we will still be who we truly are, even in an in, in environment that is full of pressures and, and circumstances mm-hmm. and situations that would normally tempt the, the average person to get out of their own truth about themselves. So we would always truthfully reflect our true feelings to others. Mm-hmm. Um, and the more humble we become the less angry we would angrily we would respond to other people's attacks of ourselves we become less defensive as time goes on we still have a desire to defend truth in the sense that we always talk about truth and we act in harmony with truth we talk about love and we act in harmony with love but it's not because we're trying to defend ourselves it's because we want to defend or or state what the truth is yeah Yeah. is it um, when you say defend, I, th- I think of a, a, you know, a rigid sort of a stance. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it more just stand for something? Or yeah, it's just more... Something, honour something? Yeah, know, it's more the, the honour of the honor of the main qualities that we're trying to honour, which is if we look, at, we look at the main things we're trying to honour, firstly there's divine love, God's love. Mm-hmm. Then there's natural love, human love. Then there's God's truth, if you like, divine truth. And then there's what is the truth, you know, the truth, the absolute truth. These are the things we want to honour the most, mm. more, than, more than ourselves, more than mm. we honour ourselves. We honour those things. And as a result of that, even when we are out of harmony with that, we'll state that. Yes. And, and we will freely do so. We won't be worried about what other people think of us and what judgments they have of us or any of those kind of things. And in fact, when other people judge us, we can observe the judgment but we don't once we're truly humble we don't even need we don't even feel the feeling of responding to the judgment yeah. right however if a truthful issue or a love based issue is involved 
then we would respond. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, we would portray the truth or portray, portray the love as it truly is, but we would not do it just out of defence of ourselves. Yeah, mm. and I think that's one of the qualities that I see in you which helps me have a deeper understanding or feeling for what I will be like when I'm truly humble, uh, is this, you, you really honour God's love and God's truth above trying to um above myself above yourself so mm. uh you enter situations even when you might still have emotions where it's very personally challenging mm -hmm. but you honor god's love and god's truth because you have faith or a knowledge that by doing that it will be the best for everyone including yourself yes and and even if i'm afraid i'll, I'll yeah. i realize that i have to go and feel my fear and even if I cry in some front of somebody else, then I'll have to just cry in some front of somebody else if that's the way it is. And if they laugh at me crying in front of them, then so be it. Like, um, you know, I get, as you know, a lot of people yeah. ridiculing me and trying to humiliate me on a daily basis. And the the key is that uh, once once you're humble, those kind of you don't even really notice. Um, you, you notice them attempting to do it, but you don't feel any need to respond to to those attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really admire that and I especially when it comes to issues surrounding my own worth. I have a lot of issue with speaking up for the fact that I might be just as worthy as you or somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um and what I'm understanding more at a soul level now that it is a quality of humility to recognize myself as of equal value to others. Mm. Uh, when, and even when you become truly humble, you don't even think of yourself in terms of equality with another there's just a an emotional assumption within you that you do feel the same as everybody else mm. and you do feel that they need to feel the same as everybody else too and so you don't even worry about what they feel about what you're saying so much because you are just focused on saying the truth and doing it in harmony with love and that's all you're really focused on you don't and, and so it simplifies your life greatly actually yeah. it, it makes your life so simple because you, you're not worried about what other people think or what you're not judging yourself or you're not sort of trying to look at yourself while you're doing something. <laughs> you, in fact, you can, when, you, when you're in, a, in a, doing something with others, you completely forget what you look like. <laughs> and it's only when somebody takes a photo of you or a picture of you and plays it back to you that, you're, oh, is that what I look like? Because you, you don't even notice what you look like when you're interacting with another person, yeah. which is very different to a person who's not humble. A person who's not humble is constantly worried worried about what they look like or constantly trying to portray themselves to be something greater than they are uh, when you're humble you don't wish to do any of those things yeah and and that like I see that in um in, t in also in the way that you interact with others that there's always a firmness for truth uh especially truth surrounding loving what is loving and what is not and mm. so uh, there's a memorable, I have a memorable uh, event when we were in Greece and there was an issue of love with some people in the group and how they were treating us. And for me, I was completely self-conscious, completely freaked out to actually address this with people. Mm. Um, because you didn't feel like you could address it because you were the target of the me. unloving behaviour. If it was about somebody else, <laughs> yeah. then... I, but, yeah, there's an injury in me about that. Whereas with me, I just see myself as exactly the same as you. So myself getting attacked by another is the same as you getting attacked by the other, and my response is going to be the same. <laughs> and that, to me, is beautiful. Mm. And, and I also see in you there's a firmness for issues around love and truth with others, with me, but with yourself equally. Mm. And to me, that seems like a quality of humility also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a person who's humble um, doesn't examine other people first. They always examine themselves first. Yes. And so they always are checking themselves against the general principles of truth and love first. Yeah. And they do that before they address anybody else um, because, the, the, because they realise that the, you know, the, the fact is that any time the person themselves, myself, gets out of harmony of love or truth, it has a law of attraction of itself, mm. of its own. And so, so other people treating me, when other people treat me badly, uh, and or they attack me or they treat me, when I say badly, I, let's define it as unlovingly. Yeah. Um, when other people treat me unlovingly, I don't first look at them. I always first look at myself and go, okay, there's obviously something in my soul here 
that's allowing this their soul to feel that they can treat me unlovingly and uh, and so that's what I first look at before I before I address the issue with them and and the only times I do address the issue with them is when you know they are in my personal space yeah. um you know quite often as you know I will allow poor treatment of myself in other people's space yeah. um and only look at myself uh in those circumstances that doesn't mean that I seek out their um, company later because obviously they've treated me unlovingly and, and I wouldn't seek out, if I loved myself, I wouldn't seek out the pe- company of people who treat me unlovingly. But I don't feel the need to address their issue when in their space and at the same time I can feel that they don't have any desire to understand what they were doing. Yeah, so so while there's an honouring of... There's an honouring, it seems like... Um, humility is not just having a big cry from everything we've just talked about. Mm-hmm. There's a there's an automatic honouring of God and God's truth within humility, isn't there? And God's laws. And like, God's laws. And God's gifts. So, you know, you have the gift of free will. If I'm humble, I'll honour your gift of free will. I won't try and manipulate it or control it or anything like that. You, you've been given a lot of other gifts from God, the gift of love. We're not in a competition with each other. Mm. I don't see myself ever as being in a competition with another person. And so I'm not always trying to, you know, say, oh, I did this and the other person, goes, oh, I did that. And we try to compete about, you know, what was done. Like, because there's no need to compete. If you're truly humble, you know what you've done and you also honour what other people have done yeah. uh, without, without restraint and without... Um, without um, feeling bad about yourself, about what somebody else has achieved. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think you said something beautiful about that recently, about just respecting uh, God's gifts in another person. So when someone else excels, seeing that not just as their their achievement, but a, a reflection of the gift that God's given them yeah, uh, I, in its fullest potential, or in a good potential. Yeah. yeah, I sort of see when other people achieve things or ex- excel, it's sort of like a reflection of God's gifts in them. And, and I'm quite often amazed uh, of what people can achieve physically, emotionally and spiritually yeah. um, based purely on desire and personality that, that God has given them. You know, that this give, these are part of the gifts God's given them. So, so I don't see myself as a, as a person competing with anybody. I'm not in a competition. I'm just... I'm just doing the things I passionately passionately desire to do and and living my life as I passionately desire to. Yeah. Um, I don't see that there is any need to compete. There is plenty of resources and there's, there's also plenty of abilities in each person to make them unique. Uh, and so I don't see any need for anybody to view me as special. And, I, and for that reason, I don't often... Uh, I don't treat anybody else as special either... What I treat them the same as what I treat myself. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I, and probably the last point that I found that was really significant in what you just said was about um, when I'm humble, I can feel everyone else, but I'm not hooked into what everyone else is feeling. So sometimes I see people um, feeling like when they're feeling their emotions that they're being humble when very often there's a lot of... Um, narcissism and what's happening mm. um there's a self-involvement, lot of self-involvement. Mm. and i feel that's a really vital point that you've just given us there about yeah. the fact that when i'm really humble uh, because often i suffer in the opposite way where I, i'm more attached to what you're feeling or someone else is feeling and as soon as i feel that thing i, I want to go away from what i'm feeling mm. so it's actually that same thing of having equal value is that right mm-hmm. on what's happening so my own feelings are equally as important as your own not only that, um, you're, you're, you've made a personal... Uh, once you're truly humble, you've made this shift away from examining yourself through everyone else's eyes. Um, you only examine yourself through God's eyes, basically. Yeah. So what, what that means is that you, you're allowed to be yourself because that's who you currently are. And you, you don't worry about what anybody else thinks of that, even when you know they think badly about it they, or they think with a lot of judgment about it you still allow yourself to be who you are. The only reason why you would modify yourself in, in company is because you're so afraid of somebody else treating you badly as a result of mm-hmm. being who you are, or you have a lot of self-judgment about being who you are. And both of those positions are positions of arrogance, actually, mm. not, not of humility. 
Uh, I also feel, though, there's this other aspect of humility, which is our relationship with God. Um, to, be, to, to enter a relationship with God and receive truth from God, you've got to be in a very open, humble space emotionally. And mm. I, I feel that's the essential part of humility in, in the sense that humility, we can discuss all the interactions we have with people, but it's our interactions with God that are the true test of our humility, actually. And this was my next question to you, is it like, why is humility so important? Why is, why is it the cornerstone, really, of our... Would you call it the cornerstone of our spiritual development? Well, yes, it's the cornerstone of our development as far as it depends upon us, in the sense that um, God is trying to help us become more humble every single day, but it is our will that we must exercise in order to achieve true humility. So, so in other words, humility is, not, is a something that we must choose to develop. It's not something that's automatically uh, present within our soul. And uh, if we go way back to the first human couple, they didn't have humility developed in their soul. They, they could have developed humility, but they did not. And they decided they wanted to be equal to God. And that was the, the sticking point of the... Well, that's the first arrogant position that anybody can take, a desire to be equal to God or, or, or God himself. And if you look at a lot of uh, New Age teachings today, they all teach that you're God. They're all, mm. this, they're all a part of this basic underlying arrogant stance, which is that we are equal to God or we are gods or we are a part of God. And I can't agree with any of those things. And in fact, you cannot establish a relationship with God why you believe such things. The reason why is because God existed before we did. That being the case, God knows much more than we do. And God will always know much more than we do. And no matter how rapidly I grow as a soul, God has already been there before me. God's already been in, you know, in that knowledge and in that circumstance and in that situation and knows about the, the intricacies of life in far more detail than I ever will or ever do. For that reason, um, my relationship with God, my humble place in my relationship with God is essential if I wish to learn. What humility does to me is it opens my soul enough for me to hear God. Without humility, we cannot hear God. What we do is we hear ourselves and or we hear others that, who we respect, but we don't hear God because to hear God, you must be in a very, very humble place. And when I say hear God, because God communicates with feelings, I have to be in such a humble place with my emotions in order to hear God because I'm going to hear God through my feelings that's how I'm going to hear God and that's also how I, I, I transmit my feelings to God that's how I feel for God by my feelings but it's also how I hear God and so if you think about it all of God's truths which are all about hearing something get, hearing knowledge from God are completely dependent upon my soul being completely in a humble state. Mm. And if humility is all about emotions, that means that I must be in an emotionally humble state. It doesn't matter intellectually how humble I think I am, or it doesn't matter how humble I try to be, I must emotionally be in a humble enough place that I can hear God's feelings about every matter. Mm. And what I love about that is that God is basically saying to us, look, to have a relationship with me, he's saying, you've got to be humble enough to recognize that I know more than you do. <laughs> That's what he's really saying to us. Yeah. And, and that I know in my feelings more than you do. Yeah. Right. And so f f that means that from God's perspective, I must open up my feelings completely to everything around me and to God herself and open up my feelings in such a way that I am completely willing to experience everything emotionally that gets projected at me from the universe God has created so that I can learn. And when I'm in a, that much of a humble place, I can hear God clearly. Once you can hear God clearly, then you have the ability to hear truth, to hear divine truth. God's truth can enter you. Without humility... There is no truth. Truth cannot enter you. You can, you can hear things in your mind, uh, from, through your ears and into mm -hmm. your brain and into your mind, and it makes no difference whatsoever to your life because you're not humble 
Because when you're humble, you don't hear with your mind or your ears, you hear with your heart. Mm. And, and to do that requires that you are completely open-hearted. Like you, you've got to hear, be able to hear and be sensitive enough to hear every single thing that God is trying to say at any given moment to you through your heart, through, through this transaction with your heart. So you could say that humility is the doorway to divine truth. Mm. Now, divine truth is the doorway to divine love. Mm -hmm. I cannot receive divine love unless I'm in a state of divine truth. But humility is the doorway to divine truth. So without humility, I can never receive divine love. Mm -hmm. Never. I have, and divine love is the substance of God that changes the soul. So the reality is, I might be able to develop myself and my natural love to a certain point, to say the sixth dimension, the perfect natural man, but I'm never going to develop beyond that without this quality of humility to be, that needs to be developed. And once the quality of humility is developed, now I have a doorway open into divine truth entering my soul. And once divine truth has the capability of entering me as, as emotions, I can feel the truth emotionally, then I'm in the state where I've opened the door into receiving divine love. Mm. I can receive divine love while I'm in a state of divine truth. And what I love about what God has done with that is God is constantly trying to get us to go into humility, into mm. humility. Go into humility, he's saying to us all the time. And, and we're often going, no, 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 can't do that. It's too painful. We're, you know, I'll look bad. I'll, you know, other people will think it's bad. Other people make fun of me. And, and all of that is do, all that does is tells us that we don't really value our relationship with God enough to be completely humble to God. Yeah, and one of the things that I had written down was that often, uh, you know, because I, I understand that this humility is the part where I use my will in order to establish a relationship with God. God's already using his will. Exactly. Humility is all I need to do mm -hmm. in order to use my will, in order to make the connection. Yes. But what I often feel is, is that I want God more than I want myself. And that can't happen. At... No, because if you're truly humble, you would, be, you would let yourself receive God's opinion of you. Yeah. And God's opinion of you far exceeds your own opinion of you generally. And God's opinion of you is very, um, like, he has a very complete opinion of you. He knows what he created. Mm. He knows its beauty. Mm. He knows its potential. He knows its potential for change and growth. He knows everything about the personality he created. So, so he knows better than you do about yourself. Mm. If you're truly humble, you let God tell you about yourself through an interaction. And if we're not truly humble, we try to tell ourselves about ourselves. We try to learn about ourselves, but, but don't engage God in the process. And, and what, what we're doing there is we're waiting for other people to tell us about ourselves or the universe to tell us about ourselves, but we're still close to God telling us about ourselves, which is the hum most humble position we can have. Yeah. And uh, and I suppose it's it's also from what you said when we're humble we we're open to experiencing everything at an emotional level, mm. which is how we learn about God's not just God's receiving God's love but His laws and in the way that's how we actually begin to learn like a child again. Yes, well, if you if you see all of God's laws as God's truth, mm -hmm. so so so. When we start, we, if we're in a humble place, we're open to God's truth. That means we're open to all of God's laws. Now, God's laws are the framework of his entire universe. And, and there are laws pertaining to every single thing we can think of physically, spiritually, emotionally, and, and uh, with regard to the universe physically. Then we look at the spiritual matter, and we can look at soul-based matter. There are all these laws affecting all of those things. But it, without humility, I'm never going to understand them. I'm never going to uh, get grasp them. Mm. I'm never going to be able to hear enough from God to, to get them. And, um, and so when I use the term God's truth, I'm lumping all of those laws together, all of that framework that God has made together that runs the entire universe in that place of truth, God's truth, absolute truth. And humility allows me to feel truth. Mm. Humility allows me to get to the point where I can receive truth. Because if, if I'm not humble, I can't receive truth. You try telling somebody who's arrogant 
something about themselves that they don't like. Yeah. They're never going to hear it. And, and the reason why is because they are not humble to hearing about themselves. Now, even if we're wrong about the person, um, if a person who's humble won't react negatively about that because they'll already have a very good opinion of who they are. <laughs> and so therefore there's no need to react. Yeah. And there's no emotion inside of them that cause them the reaction. But in our relationship with God, if you think about it, God's got all this love to give, got all this truth to give, but, but none of it can enter us without our first being humble. Mm. And, and so therefore, humility becomes a key point about you know, the divine truth, about, about how we respond to divine love. If, if we are not humble, we're going to receive very little divine love. It's going to come in dribbles. You know, the, the times when we're humble, which is when we're behind closed doors in our bedroom, perhaps having a, you know, a moment of uh, clarity where we see ourselves as we truly are. And that's the moment that we're humble. And that's the only time we're humble. Then that's the only time we're going to ever have any truth enter us. And that's the only time we're going to ever receive any divine love. Mm -hmm. If, if we can, if we can be in that state 24 by seven, every single moment of our waking hour and all of our sleep state, then we have the ability to receive divine love all the time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, once we become at one with God, we will be that humble that we're able to receive divine love at any time because, because we're able to receive divine truth at any time. And that gives us the ability to grow rapidly. If we're not humble, we will grow very slowly. Change will be forced upon us through circumstance, situation, and the law of attraction. Which is really God saying, which is God, go into humility. Yeah, which is God going, humble here, humble yep. here. <laughs> yep, and, yep. and you're going, no, 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 no. <laughs> yep. And then, then a more severe event occurs. And, and eventually the severity of the event becomes so strong that you're forced into humility just that one time. <laughs> and then you allow yourself to be humble at that one time and you receive a little bit of truth and a little bit of love in the process. And then you, uh, if you still stay resistant and you don't develop the quality of humility, the very next time you'll have to go through the next thousand years of that until you go, oh, I need to be humble there too. <laughs> and after a while, God, God through this process is teaching us that the best course of action is humility. Yeah. And, and as you know from your own progressing, uh, pro, you know, emotional processing so far, it's, it's very, you can say that you're not really yet in that place where humility is the first course of action. No. And, and that's what I feel stops most people from progressing rapidly. They, they, they do not take humility as their first course of action. It's the last mm. resort mm. when everything else has failed. Uh, that's the time generally when people are humble. Yeah, and I guess in our third interview, I want to just spend the entire time talking to you about why we find humility so difficult. Sure. Because, um, yeah, I look around, and, and even as you're talking about, you know, how we're sort of forced into humility, I'm often struck when you hear about people having spiritual realisations or... Uh, when they kind of wake up and change their whole life in another direction to one that's more meaningful. Mm. Often when you read people's stories or you hear them talking about it, it comes at a time of crisis when they're forced into humility. Mm -hmm. well, few people seem to recognise that it was actually the state of humility that opened them to this huge change. Yeah. And also um, they don't realise that that actually if they learnt from that first experience, yes. they'd never have to have another time of crisis. Because if you're truly humble, you are, you don't need to have a time of crisis uh, ever again. Because when you're truly humble, you just feel you feel everything that comes along at the moment that it comes, rather than it building up over a long, long period of time and then, and having to get like for most people, it's like standing on the edge of a precipice when it comes to feeling their emotions and looking over and they go, "Do I have to feel that? I'm going to die if I feel that." If if we're truly humble, we don't have those feelings anymore. Mm -hmm. We we don't have the feelings we're going to die if we if we have to feel an emotion. We automatically embrace the emotion because it is the the easiest uh, course of action, and it is the most humble thing to do. The most humble thing to achieve is to actually embrace every emotion as it's triggered, as as it occurs. Not not hold it on for later, hold on for later, hold on for later and eventually build up and build up and build up until we get to a crisis. And so this whole concept that people have of they have to go through a crisis in order to get closer to God, while many people in reality do go through crises to, to 
uh, get closer to God. The re reality is we don't have to have crisis after crisis to get closer to God because if we were truly humble, we wouldn't even see them as crisis. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right. And I sort of feel like I've lived my whole life in this sense of being like there's a lot of pain in me but I've learned a lot of ways to not be numb to it yes be numb be numb be numb and yep. and uh, in the last four years things have changed for me definitely mm -hmm. uh, and I'm much more sensitive now and the pain of not feeling becomes unbearable in a much shorter period of time than it used to I mm. could go for years without crying mm -hmm. and now um, you know if if things are being shaken up in me there's still um, there's still this initial feeling like oh feeling oh it's when especially when it's fear or this shame mm -hmm. feeling that a feeling of attempting to manage the emotion and Absolutely. and the reality is when we're truly humble we never manage our emotions ever again yeah we 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 just feel them we yeah. don't manage them we don't we don't try to control them we we are very sensitive to to though to when we're out of harmony with love in the expression of them. So, so we would never engage in, the, and if we're truly humble, we would never engage in an unloving expression of our emotion. Um, cause, Could you tell us what that would be? Well, an unloving expression of our emotion might be, for example, uh, give you two examples, one relating to anger. So whenever, let's say something is uh, emotionally triggered inside of myself, an unloving expression of the emotion would be to yell and scream at you about something different, you know, because, uh, or, or, or about the thing that's been triggered, rather than feeling the underlying fears and grief that I have inside of myself. When we're truly humble, when we're p perfectly humble, we will never do that again. We, we, will, we will always firstly go to the emotion inside of ourselves. If, if we had fear, for example, I wouldn't then try to make you or explain to you why we should live in our fear or, or justify our fear, or I wouldn't justify my fear to you. I would, I would just feel my fear, feel the trembling of my fear. And then if you even made fun of that, I would feel how bad it feels for, to be made fun of for being so afraid about a particular thing. And I would still engage the feeling. And they are the kinds of things that we would do if we were truly, truly humble. Um, I feel for a, for a lot of people, um, the reason why they find the divine and love path so difficult is because they've yet to learn humility. That they've yet to learn what it's like to be truly humble. Mm. That they've yet to learn how important humility is. And in fact, that humility isn't humiliation. In fact, if you look at it um, from God's perspective, when we are humble, that is the first time, if you like, that we can have a connection with God. So, so, so if you look at it from that perspective, God is looking for our humility constantly because whenever we're humble, we now are open to truth. And so therefore we have the ability to receive when we're humble. And, you know, in the first century I said, like, the meek will inherit the earth and things like that. And, and I said things like, you know, keep on seeking and keep on knocking, keep on asking and it will be given to you. A person who is humble is like that emotionally. What they're doing is they're seeking emotional truth all the time from God. They're seeking, they're, they're wanting to know and they keep knocking because they want to know about themselves truthfully. And that doesn't mean that God sees everything negative about ourselves because quite often what we see about ourselves, God sees as very positive. So, so quite often... You know, what we see about ourselves is negative, but God sees a lot more positive than we do. And we need to accept that. We need to be humble enough to accept somebody else's opinion of us, even when it differs from our own opinion of ourselves. And that's a part of humility and particularly a part of humility in our relationship with God. If we can't do that, we, we can never become the person God created us to be. Because God has this beautiful ideal of our potential. The, the thing that he created us to be. And, and what we are so bound up in is our own impressions of ourselves that while we're so bound up in those impressions, it's impossible for us to ever be what God created us to be. To, to be what God created us to be, we've got to throw out what our perception of ourselves currently is. And we've got to allow God through this relationship to, to allow us to see what we truthfully are. Firstly, what we truthfully are with all of our injuries, warts and all, and then what we truthfully are once we've cleared those from us. 
and and then we'll see a very beautiful creature that God created um, and we'll be completely humble in that space yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful it, and uh, it stirs me so much because of this feeling that I have of desiring God. just feels there's so much pain associated with the definition of myself that I currently hold. Mm. And um, probably the last question I wanted to ask you about before we get on to some of the specifics. You've kind of touched on the fact that humility is a quality that we develop. How does God view humility though? Did he put humility into us when we're born? Are we humble? How? How? Why is it then that, um, like, is it a part of our nature, or is it something that we must use our will, every single one of us, to develop? Well, I would say there's two parts to that. Firstly, by nature, God created us relatively humble. When I say relatively humble, far more humble than the majority of persons are on earth today mm -hmm. is how God created us to be. Because if you look at a child, a child does feel its emotions the instant that it has them. It, it, the, a child doesn't have really much self-concept of itself. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it's learning about itself, but it doesn't have a lot of judgment about itself and it doesn't have a lot of criticism of itself. Where, you know, when it's learning how to walk, for example, it doesn't get up, fall over, and then go, oh, I'm a useless person, I'm never going to get up again. You know? um, the child just gets up again and is humble enough to take the next fall you know, like, and then have a big cry about the next fall, even if it's a bad one, and get up and try again and get up and try again and get up and try again. You see these qualities in the child mm -hmm. constantly. As time goes on, though, you see parents sort of browbeat those qualities out of the child and the environment does browbeat the qualities out of the child. So the child becomes less and less humble as a result. Now, what I'm saying, though, is that we have the ability to even become more humble than we were even originally as a child. Mm -hmm. But but before we become more humble, we need to at least become like a child, as humble as the child as humble was. as the child was. Yeah. And so so there, I feel there are two steps in our progression when it comes to humility. The first step is undoing this environmental damage, this emotional injuries that are within us, to such an extent that we can be like a child again when it comes to our humility, when so that we can accept. The truth of, and absorb this truth without judgment, without criticism, without laughing at it, without ridiculing it. We can accept uh, love, we can accept feelings without ridiculing them, without judging them, without attacking them and so forth. This is what a child does and particularly a very, very young child. So, so we need our first step in our progression of humility is going back to the time when we were a child. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Now that to me is the, a natural place that God created us to be naturally and if, and if the environment was different um, we would all already naturally be there. But we have to now make a choice to go back to that state. Mm -hmm. We can't just uh, you know, think that that state's going to come naturally because the reality is we've been covered over with many emotional injuries and lots of those create arrogance and a facade. And so we've got to make a positive choice uh, inside of ourselves, take personal responsibility and actually choose to undo that state mm -hmm. and go back to the child. However, once we get back to the child, we still have this beautiful ability to develop even further in our humility. And in fact, my feelings are now that the closer you get to God, the more humble you become. And the reason why that is the case is because you you understand more and more how much you don't know. You understand more and more how much there is yet to learn, and so and so you become a a a, a, a very like an everlasting student, mm. uh, rather than a person who feels qualified to teach. And so you become a student of everything, mm -hmm. and this is all a part of that having that humble spirit. So you can actually develop humility beyond what was originally given as a part of your nature and personality and develop such a deep humility that that every feeling God has you allow to enter you mm. and every truth God has you allow to enter you. Now um, I, I feel that as you progress you get to a point where you're at one with God in a condition of love but but there are still blockages 
and when I say blockages, you still there's still capacities of the soul. The soul has to grow and expand in order to receive the next thing from God after that point. So, so the divine love has the effect on the soul of expanding the soul, and humility has the effect on the soul of how allowing it to stay open to the mm. truth. And so, the more closer I get to God, the more larger I become. Uh, I become larger, but I also become more humble mm. and therefore more absorbent and and more spongy when it <laughs> comes to receiving God's feelings and thoughts and feeling God's truths. Mm. And uh, and so that allows me then to discover more truth beyond, you know, beyond the point of one with God. So we can continue to discover more truths for the rest of our existence. If, and, and as we discover more truths, my feelings are, will become even more humble. Yeah. Every new truth that we discover will make us even more humble and the more love we receive will become even more humble and, and that will be an everlasting process. And that is humility that far exceeds our original design, mm. which was the, and our original design is the type of humility that a child has, for example, mm. and even a bit more than that because most children by the time they're just born are already a little resistive because of the parental environmental emotions. So if we can imagine a conceived child with no emotional damage and how humble they would be, we have the ability to become even more humble than that. That is the humility God created in us, but we have the ability to grow the quality as well. Yeah. So if, with regard to the stages in terms of, of the humility, the first stage is going back to the child. Mm. Most people I see and meet are very resistive to that, even after years and years of discussion about the about divine truth and divine love. Um, but that's the first phase. The second phase is once you get to that place and that place is completed, then the second phase is now expanding with your ability to be, to absorb even more uh, of God's truths, which means becoming even more humble in that condition. Yeah. Mm. So really, essentially, why humility is so important is that we cannot connect with God with, without humility. Yeah. It's just a, a physical, um, scientific impossibility, really. Yes, you can grow to the sixth dimension of the spirit world uh, with a degree of humility, mm -hmm. but, but you need to have this very childlike humility to get beyond that place mm -hmm. to the seventh dimension mm -hmm. of the spirit world. And to become at one with God, you need to be pristine with your childlike humility. Mm. So, so I see and I have met many spirits in the sixth dimension of the spirit world who are in varying degrees of arrogance. Some of them are quite humble, but still quite resistive to new truths. So therefore, yet to learn that real childlike humility. But I also see many six-fear spirits or six-dimensional spirits who are very arrogant and have no concept of God as a result, and no concept of the human soul as a result. They don't understand the basics of God's truth. They intellectually come up with many complex ideas, but with, that, with no understanding of it at all. And, and, and they can only observe and, and reflect upon their observations, like a scientist who has no feelings. Yeah. And I'm not saying scientists have no feelings. I'm saying imagine a scientist who had no feelings <laughs> yeah. uh, trying to examine truths. It's very, very hard. If you look at even scientists in in the world, the ones that are most successful are the ones who are connected with their feelings because they often respond to the feelings of spirits, to direction from where God is leading them. And as a result, they experiment with things that that far exceed what their colleagues are willing to experiment. Yeah. And, um, and that's the case with a person who's following the divine love path too. A person who's discovering divine truth the more humble we become, the more rapidly we can absorb new truths. And therefore, the more rapidly we get to experience them and experience the joy of them. Yeah. yeah. And even if you put God aside in terms of the quality of humility, it feels to me that we can't really develop even personal integrity or an ability to love naturally like another person in a complete way without humility. Mm, I agree. I true? agree with that, yes. Yeah. I feel there are many people who believe themselves to be the perfect human, if you like, and there's, and in the spirit world, there, the spirit world is uh, literally littered with people mm -hmm. like that. Um, but but because they don't have that childlike state, um, it's very 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 difficult for them to grow beyond that place of self reliance. 
the mm-hmm. childlike state causes God reliance. And so it's very, very hard for a person who's truly humble not to eventually receive divine truth and become at one with God. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So even just that desire to actually have a sense of personal integrity, to treat everyone equally and honestly, and to love someone without reserve or without um, trying to safeguard myself or, or, or um, think of myself as below or above them... Mm-hmm. That that requires humility if we really want to engage that. It and does. And doing so, but we can ma- we can maintain that state to a degree intellectually. intellectually no. um, whereas the child doesn't try to maintain that state. The child is in that state. Yeah. You know, if you look at a child that hasn't been affected by its environment very much at all, it can go up with a, to a person of another race or another colour and treat it treat that person exactly as mm. it treats itself. Mm-hmm. It can be generous with it and give you that. Do you want some? <laughs> I want some. It can share. You see all this beautiful love being displayed in that place. You, it, it doesn't treat a person who knows more than itself with deference mm. or with disrespect. It, it, it's a soak of knowledge you know it, it, it's like a sponge for knowledge mm. and and uh, the child is just beautifully like that mm. it's automatically like that but it doesn't have to intellectually think about mm. being in that state it just is in that state mm. and a person who's truly humble doesn't have to try to maintain a state of humility mm. they are in a state of humility without trying yeah. and it's like all of the beautiful things about the divine truth the If we truly embrace the divine truth as God intended it to be, every change we make in our soul is achieved. And once that change is made, we can maintain that change without trying. Without effort. Where there's no effort because there is no emotion to prevent us from having those loving feelings coming out of us or or being in a humble place. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, babe. That's really beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Um, for the next part of the interview, I'd like to go through aspects of humility with you, and I'm going to use as my guide some writing that you did a few years ago. A few years ago so, what are the next? Uh, is this the second part of the session? Is it, or or what's the second and third parts of the session? Could you explain? Okay, so basically today I was hoping we'd cover the introduction to mm-hmm. what is humility mm-hmm. and then begin to um, discuss the aspects of humility, of yep. which um, there's about six here, yep. that uh, each is quite in-depth, I feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wasn't sure if that would take us really the rest Another of this interview and the next interview. Mm-hmm. And then I was hoping we could dedicate the last uh, interview just to opposition to humility why we find humility so difficult right Um, so i'm wondering whether it's not the best time to to stop this interview now then mm -hmm. as as session one yeah and then we go into the actual qualities of humility as session two Uh, that might be the best way to approach this interview and that way the people who are part of the audience can you know first have that introduction to humility and absorb that and then we can go into sort of these more detailed qualities uh, that surround the qualities of humility, humility and discuss them in detail rather than at the moment discussing them like if, we, if, we only, if it's only another half an hour or so in this discussion and if we, if we start discussing it now we won't get to cover the detail that we probably need to. Yeah, I, I definitely want to go into detail about okay. them all. So, yeah. so let's do that then. So, okay. so our next discussion together will be about the qualities of humility. The different aspects of humility, yep. yeah. Good. And hopefully we'll fit that in one interview. I just think it might, we might have a long interview, that's all. Okay, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, babe. Thank you, darling. Yeah.